Hey guys, here with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. I'm just going to explain to you how my house works. Um, and as the title of this video suggests, it's not always green and it depends on what time of day it is, whether I use the grid or not. So this is how my home is set up. Um, so I'm on three phase. I've got a Tesla Powerwall 2. I've got two sets of uh, solar PV panels. My old PV panels are 3 kilowatts, which are now on the B phase. And I've got a 5.4 kilowatt uh, set of panels, which I just installed last week. They're on the A phase, and C phase is empty. So basically at all times, no matter what time of day, C phase is supplied by the grid. B phase is probably the simplest to explain. The old 3 kilowatt panels during the day when the sun is out, and if there's enough generation from that, then B phase is pretty much completely covered by my panels. And if there's any excess, it'll be uh, exported back to the grid with a feed-in tariff. My new panels are a bit different. So my new panels are hooked up now to my Tesla Powerwall 2 on the A phase. So when the sun is up, um, there's enough generation, which there normally is, then uh, it will supply the home. It will charge up the battery. It will also export to the grid all at the same time if there's enough power. So that's kind of the best case scenario in uh, good daylight, good sunlight, um, A phase and the B phase are covered, and the C phase uses the grid. Um, now with the help of a three phase meter, can you guys see that three phase meter? Basically the three phase meter is really good, so it looks all across uh, everything that the house does with regards to import and exporting power and it will basically net it all off. So it sort of adds up everything. You know, if say for example, uh, importing is plus, um, exporting is minus, you know, plus, minus, uh, plus, it'll basically add up, you know, this is like three, that's like two, that's like one, two. These are all very vague examples, but it'll just do the math and then it'll work out exactly the net amount of energy that it is either uh, exporting, sorry, exporting down to the grid or importing or using to the house and bill you accordingly. So hopefully with my new system it will basically be net negative at all times meaning that there'll be more energy going to the grid than coming back up. So that's the concept of a net meter and that's my house. Now the other complicating thing is that with the Powerwall 2 um, it will also meter uh, using the gateway that comes with the Powerwall 2 the B phase and the C phase. So basically, let's just say for example, at night time. So at night time, when the sun is down, the, the solar panels on my B phase, which is the old panels, no longer supplies the home. So you know, there's no more sun, that cancels out, that cancels out. So now the B phase at night is using uh, energy from the grid, um, as does the C phase. So these two phases at night use the grid energy but with the gateway, there's something called a CT clamp, which basically is like a little meter for the gateway. And anything that the B phase and the C phase uses from the grid, so let's say for example it uses one kilowatt, this one uses one kilowatt, the Powerwall 2 will sense that using the gateway and discharge uh, two kilowatts back to the grid. So it will, this is another little phase going back to the get to grid, uh, it will send back minus two kilowatt. So that way, that's positive one, that's positive one, that's negative two, boom, that's zero that the meter looks at. You don't get charged for any energy uh, at that time. Um, and you can see that with your app as well. You can see that, okay, the Powerwall 2 is being discharged, uh, but we know that if, you're, if you, you're certain that your appliance is on the B phase or the C phase, then it's not technically being, you know, using energy from the Powerwall 2. It's still grid energy, so it's not completely green. Um, but the power to, financially speaking, discharge the energy back to the grid and you don't get billed. So that's that's kind of the worst case scenario at night time when B phase and C phase aren't green anymore. They're using grid energy, which is 80% coal supplied here in New South Wales. Um, but I guess you can say that, well, this energy was stored from solar energy during the day. And so I'm offsetting, uh, you know, by sending that solar energy, which is clean, renewable, back to the grid at night time, uh, even though it's sort of trading, like trading coal energy with solar energy, but still better than just using pure grid energy, right, I suppose. You can see it that way. 
All right, guys, well, that's uh, kind of how my house is working currently. Let me show you um, my app at the moment, what it's doing. So I've been looking um, over the last couple of days with my Tesla app. Now, don't forget, I've only had my new panels for a few days. So this is early days still, but today was kind of like a cloudy day. Um, so far, we're at about, about 6 o'clock, and that's the shape of the solar energy produced for the panels. I've got, I've got two sets of panels. I've got, um, so this is kind of... If I, you guys can see that, uh, yeah, you can. So we've got northeast facing panels, and I've got northwest facing panels, and these are all northeast panels. So, uh, as you'd expect, towards the end of the day, the northwest panels come into play as the sun is setting. As you can see, even though it's a cloudy day, you can kind of see a little tail at the end of this uh, graph here with the solar energy. It sort of bubbles out towards the end. I think that's the northwest panels coming into play as the sun is setting. So that was kind of what my intention was, having northwest panels, to just prolong the energy con um, production towards twilight. And hopefully on a more sunny day, I'll be able to show you again um, a better looking graph uh, as that bubble expands towards the end of the day. I'll show you also a cloudy day from yesterday. Uh, let's have a look here. Yesterday's graph was kind of like that. Uh, with an 8 kilowatt, you know, 8.4 kilowatt system, it still produced 10.5 kilowatt hours, which for me, on a 3 kilowatt system in the old days, before I got the new one, it was, you know, a reasonably good day at 10.5 kilowatt hours. But on a cloudy day, producing that much, I was pretty happy. And, uh, you know, I still didn't use any, you know, technically any, um, anything excess from the grid uh, overnight. The power to was still charged enough uh, for me to sustain solar energy throughout the night. So I'm pretty happy so far. Of course, I'll provide you with more data and hopefully more um, in-phase microinverter data too when I get uh, my login from my installer uh, as time goes on. Alright guys, well, thanks very much for watching. hope that explains things a little bit. Um, so I've told you about my house setup, about how you can have two sets of panels, how the gateway monitors all three phases, how my C phase doesn't use any solar energy unfortunately, uh, even though we sort of trade off um, with the net meter. So I kind of put things that I don't really use that much. So I think I've got a three phase AC, which so that's using one phase. I also uh, my car charger is on that phase because I've got a special plan with AGL, my power company, that's uh, giving me all I can charge for $1 a day. That's no longer the case. Um, you can't apply for that anymore. They've taken that plan off the market, so I'm kind of the last few legacy clients for that charger plan, so I'll use that as long as I can. Uh, I was having a chat with my wife today with our Model 3 reservation because she works from home. She has the potential one day when the Model 3 does come if it's a bright sunny day, we'll plug it in when she's home and it'll basically charge from the sun. Like that, that's incredible, right? That's just kind of the, the future that we all dreamed of, that we can charge our cars with clean, renewable energy. And that's kind of the model that we should all aim for, certainly in Australia with so much sun. Like that's our number one uh, source of energy, I would think, you know, looking at the sun and how much we get in this country. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting Ludicrous Feed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, happy charging. Thanks for watching, and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. Happy charging!